What's up, everyone? I'm back with um, more shit to say. Today, I am sick in more ways than one. Um, so instead of rum and a candle, I got incense and tea. Today, I'm enjoying President's Choice uh, Ginger Peach Tea. It's one that I found at Shoppers, and it's fine. It's a fine tea. It's, I don't think I'm going to get it again, but I enjoy it, you know? <laughs> I also wanted to start off this video by saying um, I appreciate some of you a lot, <laughs> because after the last time I was sitting here, um, I had like three, four people <laughs> reach out to me, and be like, are you okay? <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? I'm, I'm fucking great. Like, did you not see the video? I'm going out by myself. That's, I'm so empowered right now. <laughs> but then I rewatched the video and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> but uh, thank you for that. I am good. Um, today, I wanna talk about a huge subject for me in my life. Um, something, you know, that takes some, some, frankly, some balls to talk about. Um, it's really controversial and it's Batman and how he has affected my life in both positive and negative ways. He inspires me a lot, but he also de-inspires me a lot and in my recent weeks, months, maybe even a year, <laughs> um, I've realized the negative effects he's had. And there's a lot of toxic traits that I've picked up, things that I think are noble, but are actually so self-destructive, it hurts other people. So let's get right into it. I'm gonna start by uh, lighting our little incense. This is um, eucalyptus mint. Ah, I always suck at doing this. Did I do it right? Everyone just, uh, let's all get a whiff of that, you know? Check that out. Ooh. It reminds me of um, the sparklers, so I can write my name. Anyways, so, Batman. The ways he inspires me. And he does have many positive traits, especially when it comes to doing the right thing. And doing the right thing in a way like in regardless of how it makes him look and I think that's a really great thing um, he doesn't care to take credit for the good things he's done he doesn't care about I'm gonna check if my microphone's on because I'm fucking panicking now sorry I've done it so many times where I've fucking recorded a 30 minute video and fucking forgot to turn the microphone on I'm not doing that again where was I? Doing the right thing, regardless of how it makes him look. I try to apply this in my life. Um, you know, it seems <laughs> seems like me talking about it right now is me not doing it. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, no, I do good things, and I don't, I don't care to tell people. I'm a great, noble person. And I don't need anyone to know. That's why I'm making this video, you know. Um, but it's cool, like, you know, he takes, he takes the fall for, for Harvey Dent or, like, he, he doesn't mind being the bad guy if it means the, the greater good will happen. <laughs> is, that a, is that the right way to say that? I don't care. Like, I don't think I ever would, like, take credit for, for good things. Like, I do sometimes, obviously. It's, I think it's a good thing to take credit for what you've done. Um, but the way I'm trying to get better is, like... Um, saying my opinion, even if it might, like, 
be an uncomfortable conversation because sometimes you have to have uncomfortable conversations because that's the greater good. But in the past, I've been so focused on um, being liked that I, I miss out on that. That's the only area I think that I miss out on in that regard um, is like being seen as like overly opinionated or like contrarian, I guess. Um, so I think it's cool to like sometimes take a utilitarian approach. Now where that falls short is where Batman starts to get very toxic. Because that's about all of the good qualities. I mean, his whole self-improvement thing, that's great, you know. He's, uh, he's fun to watch. He's a fun character to watch, you know. He's probably my favorite fictional character. Definitely my favorite superhero, but probably my favorite fictional character. Um, because the way he's sort of always the underdog, he and he'll improve himself until, you know, he, he defeats this villain that's way stronger than him or whatever. I think I used to think that a lot of the things he does is things that I should do. I'll get into which one specifically, but um, realizing that that's some toxic, like, I want to say toxic masculinity, but I think it applies to everyone. It's like sort of a toxic stoicism I think Batman has. And I used to think that was a really good thing of like never, you know, saying when you're uncomfortable if it means that other people are cool, etc. So I, the first time I kind of noticed this was about a year ago. Um, I was <coughs> having a rough day and I decided to go for a walk in the rain and like get my hair in my face. <laughs> um, and I, you know what you do when you like, you're walking past store windows? Like, I feel like everyone does this and if you don't, you're a fucking liar. Y yeah, you either do this or you're a liar. You like check yourself out, you're like, fucking shit, who's... God damn, who's that in the fucking, you know? And I was doing that. And I was like, oh, I'm so depressed, but like, fuck, like, I look sick as fuck right now. <laughs> and that was a moment where I was like, wait a second, this is not good. <laughs> like, do I kind of want to be depressed in a weird way? Or like, want to be moody in a weird way because it makes me look edgy? Like, um, watching the new Batman movie was like, fuck, that guy was deranged. That guy was so deranged. Oh my god. Like, talking to fucking Alfred, he's like, you're not my dad. I don't like, oh, nobody come close to me. I can't express how I feel ever because I'm doing these good things. And he's so fucking sad. <laughs> but my god, is he cool. He's so cool. <laughs> And so I think I like subconsciously wanted to apply that to my life. And that moment where I, I kind of realized it and you can, I think like you can apply that to other like literally me characters, like especially um, Blade Runner. You can be like, oh, Joe from, from Blade Runner. He's, he's so lonely, but it's in a cool way. <laughs> and that's kind of the romanticized loneliness um, that Again, like, people, like, some people chalk it up to, like, male characters. I think it applies to anyone who deals with loneliness probably feels this. So, yes, yeah, so I wanted to apply the aesthetics of a cool character. And at the time when that movie came out, I was living in my parents' basement in the middle of bumfuck nowhere, Ontario. Um, and it was a very lonely time in my life. I mean, I appreciate, I have a very close relationship with my parents. I'm, I'm really lucky to, like... You know, I could call them my friends, you know, like, I can talk to them about most anything, which is really cool. Not a lot of people have that. Um, and I take care of the dogs and et cetera. There's a lot of good things about being there, um, but it was really lonely. And when that movie came out, it really spoke to me and I kind of, I'm realizing this now, I think I kind of leaned into the sort of tortured artist thing. Um, a little too much like I had this um, garage gym that was like really rugged I mean it was cool but 
it's like I kind of purposefully make myself mm-hmm. moody like not not on purpose like subconsciously like, make myself moody to like fit a fit an aesthetic of what that character is and I was kind of making myself into a character um, which is unhealthy because people are not characters um, we're much more three dimensional than that um, but yeah I think Batman kind of in you know I've I've watched that character since you know I was probably like two or three right um, and I think he sort of makes it seem like the tortured artist or like the mad genius is like the way to go like you he almost makes it seem like you gotta be crazy to fucking be good at your art and I kind of um, for a while like I applied that to my life right like but finding out now like that I've been in healthier places it's like my art's way better when I'm taking care of myself you know like some of the fucking shit I was writing I mean I was so lonely it was like unrelatably lonely like so beyond lonely like I wasn't seeing anyone like literally um so it was like when I'm not taking care of myself in that way it's like even the songs I'm writing it's like not a lot of people are going to be able to relate to this or you're going to write it in a way that's not genuine or they'll make it seem like it's it was it, it, come off in a way it's like a Smith song <laughs> And they're, like, way overly fucking woe is me and self-indulgent. And I find, like, when I'm a little healthier, the songs I write and, like, the lyrics especially are way, way more mature. Like, they come from a way more interesting place. I would sort of compare, like, the difference between Lana Del Rey and The Smiths, (laughs) if that makes sense to you. Like, The Smiths is very fucking woe is me. Like, oh, I'm... I was looking for a job, and then I found a job, and heaven knows I'm miserable now. It's like, dude, grow the fuck up. (laughs) Grow the fuck up. The difference of Lana Del Rey songs, I find anyways, and why I connect with it a bit more nowadays than than I do the Smiths, um, is she's much more mature and self-aware of like, her self-destruction, I guess, and, like, where she stands in the situations she writes about. Um, she takes more responsibility. She's, I mean, part of it could be the difference between a woman in, in a patriarchy and a man. It's, like, the different kind of mindsets and how it affects them differently. Um, but I will say, Lana Del Rey. <laughs> Newsflash, everyone, Lana Del Rey is more mature than fucking Morrissey. <laughs> That's a big one. Thanks, subscribe to my channel, um, because you'll get more bombs like that. But actually, it's kind of interesting that, like, as I'm becoming healthier, I listen to more, um, mature music. Like, um, I was very, like, listening to the Mansplain Manipulate music when I was feeling pretty lonely. Um, and I kind of knew that, like, I, 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 I would joke about it with my sisters. Like, I was aware of like the kind of people who listen to that music but I liked it and I, I could relate to it um like you know Asleep or um I Know It's Over those kind of songs um very very Batman vibes and I got super into those songs right after um it was sort of during the time that that, that the Batman movie came out um, and after watching that movie, I leaned into it so much more. Like, I wanted to just sacrifice myself for any sort of goal. Um, and that's that's sort of the next uh, point I want to get across with how Batman's toxic, in my opinion, is he doesn't take care of himself for the sake of a goal. And I think in hustle culture and just people's lives in general they they make it seem like for example um with fitness it's like you're gonna be unhappy when you do this it's like but you should do it anyways even if it makes you unhappy and it's it's true to an extent like 
you should not just do everything because of the way you feel. Like, you know, sometimes it's like, yeah, you don't feel like going to the gym, but you do have this goal, so you should go anyways. But I think there should be, like, you should be doing something you enjoy most of the time. Like, if it's making you so miserable to, you know, eat a clean diet and go to the gym, it's like, if you're this upset, is it worth your kind of goal body? Like, you know what I mean? Or, and the same thing goes for a career goal. It's like, how much of your mental health are you willing to sacrifice for um, your goal? But I think the thing is, is that it's not an either or. And I think characters like Batman make it seem like it's an either or. Like, either you can be happy and like relaxed, or you can achieve your goal. It's like, there's definitely a balance you can do. Like, you can pick things that you enjoy doing. And I feel like if you're, say, working towards a career goal and you're fucking miserable the whole time, it's like, maybe, maybe that's a sign it's not the career for you. And, like, I get that, like, not everyone's interested in a career, but there's got to be something, in my opinion, there's got to be something, like, today, for example, I'm going to be cleaning my apartment. That's going to take up some time that I could be doing music. But I'm still going to clean my fucking room because that's taking care of myself, and ultimately that would be more productive than just practicing for the shows I have coming up, right? Um, because it's going to make me healthier. Batman's not cleaning his fucking room. Batman doesn't clean his room. There ain't no way. Have you seen his fucking Batcave? Shit's dusty as fuck. Dude doesn't own a duster or a vacuum. You know? He gets some... He's, he's lucky that he has Alfred because he can fucking do it for him. But could you imagine if Alfred wasn't there? Dude, it would be a fucking hoarder's episode. There ain't no way Batman thinks he has time to clean his room. And it's disgusting. It's gross. He's probably smells. Have you ever thought about that? Batman is probably stinky as fuck. 90% of the time. Except for when maybe he goes out. But I bet when he dances with Catwoman, Catwoman is kind of like... <laughs> you should do things for your health. Even if they take, up, take time away from your art or your your goals. The next big point I wanted to get across was the way Batman doesn't tell people how he feels and how he, uh, and the character, the way it's written often I find is that, I mean, I think it's probably written in a way a lot of the time, especially in movies maybe, that it's not a good thing, but it definitely comes across at least growing up as a as a as a young lad, that this is what I'm sh I should be doing. I shouldn't tell people what makes me uncomfortable. I shouldn't tell people what makes me upset or feel disrespected. Um, if it means that the other person will benefit, and that's what Batman does. Batman doesn't tell people how he fucking feels. I am upset that I've ad adopted that into my life because it doesn't benefit. Truthfully, it doesn't benefit the people in your life to not tell them how you feel or like tell them when you're uncomfortable I think first of all people want to be useful to you like they want to help you so like you should let people Accommodate you like That's just a good thing of like someone Saying you know, I don't know someone says the R word and it makes you uncomfortable tell them that you don't appreciate that word and like Ask them to at least not say it around you. They, I mean, they shouldn't be saying that fucking word anyways, but um, that word's disgusting. But the point is, it, it's, it's beneficial to tell people that because most of the time they'll probably go, okay. And if they don't, then, f you know, fuck them, but don't actually. But they're probably not the greatest person. There's this sort of thing that I thought I was doing that was really good and noble, and, and it was just this. It was... Okay, I'm going to do things for other people, and regardless of how stressed it makes me, regardless of how, you know, how much time it takes up, or how much it eats away from my own health, I'm going to get it done, because I told this person I would do it. Um, and, like, this sort of saying yes to every favor someone asks of you. 
because it seems like the right thing to do. It seems like the noble thing. It's like, yeah, you want to be helpful to people, but you should say no sometimes because you can only be so useful. Like if you say no to most things, the things you do say yes on, you'll probably do better anyways, and you'll be sort of more useful and more valuable in, in the in the long run. Um, and then when you do help people, it'll be really good because you've cut out the appropriate amount of time and energy for it. And that's something I've only learned recently. Um, sort of um, listening to my own emotions and things like that. Um, yeah, and on that subject, there ain't no way Batman listens to his emotions. I mean, that guy fucking, he just kind of does shit. And, and again, it, it seems noble. But even in the movies, does he really do that much? Like, especially, like, the Dark Knight and the Batman movie. Like, does he really save? Like, he definitely helps, right? But, like, does, like, is it necessary for him to just always ignore how he feels? Like, I feel like he could be a better superhero if he, was a, if he went to therapy. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. Um, I like to ask people for help. <laughs> What a crazy idea. And like, okay, look, I get that's not the point of the movies. It's a hero movie, you know, whatever. But still, um, you're watching it as a, as a young youngin, and you're going, oh, maybe this is how I should be. But you pro probably fucking shouldn't. Uh. And so, you guessed it. I've written a song about this. Uh, I wrote this song a year ago. I don't know whether or not to call it I think I like it, or the Batman song, so maybe let me know which title's better. Um, and it's literally about this. So I'm going to do an unplugged version. Hopefully it's cool. All right, I'm probably psychotic for singing while I'm fucking sick. Um, but fuck it, we do it for the views. I got a schedule. I'm the tortured artist. No! I'm going to be here all fucking day. God fucking damn it. Okay. Okay, we got it. Let's go. Got it. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Let's sing the fucking song. It's cool to be ill, it's cool to have problems 